All right, let's do some fun techniques for creating highlights and textures. So if you have a really small highlight, something that you absolutely can't risk losing, like let's say you're doing a portrait and you have the highlight in somebody's eye, um, you want to make sure that you are protecting that. So this isn't a method that's meant to be used for large areas of white, but if you have little tiny small areas, um, there's this stuff called frisket or masking fluid. And what it does is you, um, it protects your paper. So it's a liquid that turns into like a, a plastic when it's dry. So this is a masking fluid. So I just dip this stick in here. It will ruin any paintbrush. So um, either be willing to lose the paintbrush or don't use a paintbrush. So if I needed to create some textures, I'm going to put this on here, but then I do need to let it dry before I paint over it. So I can do some little tiny detailed designs with this. Sometimes I'll just put like a little bit on um, a side piece of paper or a magazine. So I'm not letting the whole jar dry out. So for example, I just put a little dot right there and that way I can close up the jar, set it aside, and then that's my source. Okay, so I am going to let those little droplets dry. Over on this side, I'm going to do a little bit of wax resist. So I did a spiral here. I'll do a couple more lines. I'm just doing crayon. So I've already painted that with the light blue and I'm going to paint over that now with um, I'll choose something, you know, totally, totally different or stronger. I could do the same color. So maybe I'm going to choose like um, a blue violet. that would be a wax resist. Another thing that you can do um, to make highlights in an area, uh, you're not going to have super clear control over them, but you can take sandpaper. Now this will damage your paper. Uh, you're not going to be able to paint over it and have the same kind of control with the sizing because the sizing is going to be going away with this. But I can go in now on dry paper and create highlights that way. There you go. Another way to create texture is just some good old plastic wrap. So I can take this, mix my colors in my lid. And I can either use this in a wet area to pick up color like that, the same way that we did paper towel pickup, or I can use this in the paint and I can add color. You could do this with a sponge, like I said, a paper towel, all different ways. Another fun method is actually rubbing alcohol. So I have rubbing alcohol, just regular isopropyl alcohol in this. And if you want it to be an even finer point, I have these little tiny metal cap caps that you just kind of screw on there a little bit. And if you take an area, here I'm gonna paint a new area for this one. I just splattered watercolor on my face. <laughs> See? There we go. Moving on. So now if I'm going to um, do some little drops of alcohol in here, I am going to paint this. I'm having trouble controlling this brush. I want to switch brushes. Okay, there's plenty of paint and water on there. I don't need to even dip this brush into anything. Just going to paint in this area. I'm going to dry it off on my paper towel even because it's just too much water. Okay, 
So I have a fairly even coat. It's still see-through. I can still see the paper. But now you can do things like this. Ooh. Satisfying. And then hopefully, well, that masking fluid still looks a little bit wet where it's thick in some spots. But just for the sake of wrapping this up, let me show you. I'm going to paint right over it. You can see where it is. That's the wet one right there. And after the paint dries, I will be able to just roll the masking fluid off with my fingertip. And those spots will be perfectly white, pure white paper. All right, that is it for now. Have fun with your watercolor.